Hi, I'm Mike Holt with Gibson Memphis, and I want to thank everyone from Long & McQuaid to, for joining us here at the NAMM Show. I'd like to take a few minutes and walk you through what Gibson Memphis is offering for 2015. Uh, let's start over here with our studio line. And this year, we brought in binding on all the studio guitars. We have two new colors. We've got a new, a new uh, sunburst. And here's our Studio 339 with a new deep cherry finish. Just a gorgeous, rich, lustrous finish. These guitars are every bit the Gibson 335 and 339 you've come to love. They have the same center block construction, and we've shared a lot of the new features that we're putting out of the guitars for this year. And some of those are, we're putting locking stud tailpiece on it. So it's a standard Gibson tailpiece, but we've actually got a new system where you can lock it down with the studs. This complements the locking Tone Pro ABR that we put on last year that did just so well. So tie all of this in and it brings it together and it's got the new branded F-hole, which you'll see a lot on the Gibson product from Memphis. Let's move on. We then go up into the Satin Series, and that brings you right into the full size. And with our Satins this year and other guitars going up the line, we replace the old dots with the square block inlays, rectangular, pardon me, uh, that you would find on your 63s and 60 guitars. It just dresses it up a little bit. But here's some of the things that, that really tie this guitar into a player. We've got a new truss rod in here, and we went back to the future. This is a 1958 early truss rod made with a solid brass billet at the end. It anchors beautifully. It's a little bit larger rod, so the function is amazing. The necks are very responsive. You can dial just a little bit, and it just brings right in. With that, we coupled it with bone nuts. Across the board on all of our core models, we switched over from the old nut material we had, a man-made, to the bone nut. It's got a very nice feel to it. It's a traditional, it, when you tune it, it it's like a self-lubricator. It just really works well, it holds up really well, and they sound good. Let's go on here now. Here's our figure 335. We'll get this in the light. I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, but we have a new finish this year. We put a lot of new finishes in just to try to keep things moving. And our guys in the finish department came up with this vintage sunburst, which is just a little more vibrant. It's still translucent all the way around. Um, I'm very proud of what they did. It's just a beautiful color. You'll love it. It's just warm and vibrant and just pops. And of course, you get a beautiful rosewood board with a block inlay. And this year, we've discovered on our historics how nice it is to have rolled binding. So we've actually put an entire new process in our factory just to roll the binding on the necks so you don't get that sharp edge. So you pick up the guitar, it feels like it's been played for years. And we're going across the board on that. <laughs> and also across on all of these, and we'll, we'll start over here with our 339 so you can see it. Internally we've made some improvements too. Right here we went with a .015 microfarad capacitor. Last year and for many years now we've used an 022 for both pickups. The 015 gives you a little bit more clarity on the high end of the neck pickup. So when you play it, you'll hear that, just a little bit nicer sound. So that is, of course, right across the board in our new guitars. The pickups will go there now. We were using Burst Bucker 1 and 2 in our historics for several years. Very well received pickup, and we decided that it was time to bring those right across the board, and all our guitars get to have those in our core lineup here. Now, 
Moving on, we have our regular 335 that's not figured, but it is a beautiful guitar, and the Cherry is just it's one of those favorites, always a favorite for Gibson. You know, then, you know, here again is another figure 335 in the natural. And you can see how that figure just pops out. So it's just, it's eye candy. And along with the eye candy, all of our models now have the Grover milk bottle. They're reissued Grover tuners with an 18 to 1 ratio. So the tuning is just that much finer. So when you go to tune your guitar, it's just incredibly smooth and accurate. And we think we've really nailed all that. Now, last year, we introduced our ES Les Paul line. And here, we'll show you what we're doing for the ES Les Paul line for 2015. Now, very traditional color for our ES Les Paul has been the Heritage Cherry Sunburst. So, we thought it's time. We started with the Light Burst, which is gorgeous. We brought in for this year the Heritage Cherry Sunburst on the same guitar. And also, it's got some of the new features, the historic truss rod, you know, the roll binding, the bone nut, all of the features you want. And the pickups in the historic are the historic, pardon me, are the historic pickups. For the Les Paul, we, we found they sounded so good, and we have our own pickups now called MHS, which is Memphis Historic Spec. Uh, these pickups were created working with Rusty Anderson, emulating in 1959. And we like them so much, we put them in the Les Paul. Now, brand new for this year also, the ES Les Paul Bass. Guitar players will find this to be very comfortable. You grab it, and it just feels like almost a guitar. It's a 30.2 inch scale. The neck has the same dimensions as a Les Paul. The weight on this bass is 6.5 pounds. So it's very comfortable, it sounds great. We're making our own MHS bass pickups on these. And the placement on the neck pickup is very traditional for sort of the old Beatles 60 sound. We've brought our, our bridge pickup down farther so it's not too thumpy. You can still have that big percussive sound. And they're, they're just a great feeling, a great sounding bass. Let's just keep on moving. Okay. Here's our Lemon Burst, which is our other color and our core lineup this year for the Les Paul. And now we're getting into some limited run guitars, and these are for the first quarter of the year. We, we have the very traditional Les Paul Custom, followed by our Les Paul with the Bigsby. This is in the Light Burst from last year that we launched it in, which is just a warm, beautiful color. Uh, very popular guitar already. Continuing on the line of Les Pauls, you have to have a gold top. You know, nothing says Les Paul like a gold top. And for the gold top, we gave it the VOS treatment. We usually say for our vintage historic guitars, but it needed it. It just glows. So here we go with that. And a guitar that was really designed uh, for Long and McQuaid is a Cobra Burst Les Paul. And I hope you guys like this. Already there are a lot of people just clamoring. So we had a lot of fun with this and thank you for the idea. Now we'll keep moving ahead down here. This is reminiscent of the old A3 Gibson mandolin. They used to call it the refrigerator top. So you've got this soft white top paired up with a deep, rich stain on the back and sides. It sort of ties history you know, with modern guitar. Speaking of history, 1952, ES-295. Everybody knows this as the original rockabilly guitar, and they were all gold. But there were a few in a cherry, very rare, and we thought it's just a good thing to bring back. 
So very limited. There are a few of these Cherry uh, 1952s. All of the same spec as, as a 52 that we, per that we built last year in the Scotty Moore. Now let's go back over here. Trini Lopez. You gotta love Trini Lopez. At least Dave Grosher does. So, last year we did the, the wine red, but, pardon me, the cherry Trini. He had an ebony one and we brought it in. It's just, Trini was one of the first guys that, that we've heard as kids in my age. So it's just wonderful working on a guitar with him. Now, for this year, just for the first quarter, we have a figured Wine Red 335. And what really stands out on this guitar is we put our little bit larger 390 style neck. And this is a neck that's modeled after a 1959, only it's about 50,000 thinner. So it's a nice round feel, but not quite as large. Now this brings us into the historic lineup. 1964 ES-345 TDC. Now this is a limited run because this particular one has got the figured maple. The one right below it is in our core lineup, which is a not figured. Oh, pardon me, I just grabbed a 335. Can you edit that? Sure. All right, good. Um, they were mixed. Excuse me, let me do this. Because you said you're, you'll actually see the signage. There. Should I pick it up or just leave it? You, you can leave it. You got it. Okay, um, cool. And what else are we going to hit? Because uh, we're running on to almost 15 minutes here. All right. Uh, let's just jump over here. These, I'll be really fast on the historic. Okay. Let's just do an overview. For 2015, our historic lineup, the guitars that we have here reflect what we've been building, which are very accurate reproductions. Last year, we started using quarter sawn Adirondack, or called red spruce, braces in our 1959. And the tonality was so spectacular, it made such a difference that we've gone across the board with historic. So every historic guitar has quarter sawn Adirondack spruce bracing now. We've gone to the correct beveling on the pick guards this year. And then for the last couple of models, in our limited runs, we've got this beautiful Indigo Blue 335. Oh, okay. We've got a 355 in olive red, which is very reminiscent of the Chris Cornell. And this brings us to our final guitar which is an ES390. It's got the MHS pickups, P90s in this, totally hollowed like a 330 in a 60s cherry. <laughs> thank you very much for visiting us, and thank you very much for carrying Gibson guitars.